Are you having problems cleaning your components manually? Or maybe your current cleaning system can't quite get into all the bores, pockets, and complex features. We're gonna be reviewing the Eco C Wave today from EcoClean, so keep watching to find out more about it. So Matt, we're here in, in front of the Eco C Wave, which is a water-based cleaning product. Why would someone go for a high-spec rather than a standard water-based cleaning system? Yeah, uh, you can get many systems of different qualities and different volumes. And the important thing about the EcoC Wave, it's a high volume, high capacity machine, which will give you a really high cleaning standard. Now importantly, with any water system, you have to maintain the quality of your water. Otherwise, when you add contamination, your quality will reduce very, very quickly. And the, this Wave machine has got three tanks with a high distillation rate and a high uh, filtration rate on there, which means that you hold the quality for longer before you have to do something with it. Because you can't what? clean apart with dirty water. Exactly, yeah. And smaller systems, which maybe only have spray or, or limited power, then maybe they don't reach the uh, uh, degrease level or cleaning standards or particle filtration levels the same. This is a very powerful machine uh, with ultrasonics, spraying, injection flood wash, three tanks for filtration so you can wash rinse and rinse. Typically all your cleaning is done with your first tank, washing, 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 and then importantly for all water-based systems to rinse, rinse, rinse to get a stain-free finish. So why is that rinse? If you need a stain-free finish though, I mean do you just use standard tap water? You can. Uh, some parts you can't see any, any uh, minerals or salts which are in the tap water when it's finished and dried. But other components, when you dry the water off, it leaves uh, a salt stain or a mineral stain behind. So to get rid of that, maybe you need to use deionized water. So uh, water which is free of the minerals in, in, in there. And then when you rinse and dry, then you don't leave a stain behind. Fair enough. What about ease of use? So some cleaning systems, I guess you'll, you'll wash the product, but there's no way to dry it. You have to go and leave it to air dry. How do you deal with that, those problems? Yeah, some people are happy with wet parts when they come out. A, a lot of automotive are happy with that. They don't need to dry for the next process. But typically, most customers need a dry component. We're using water-based systems here. This machine has a dual capacity. It has a hot air drying system. So it blows hot air, which is heated over a heating element, through the chamber, high volume, up to about 130 degrees. So it's uh, nice and warm. And uh, if that's not adequate enough or you need a quicker process, we can also switch to vacuum drying, which will ensure 100% dry components. And I guess if you vacuum dry, then you're not going to have any problem with um, excess heat when the operator pulls the parts out. They can, they're, they're okay to yeah. touch. Or the steam. When you open the door, you see it on many machines, the steam comes out the front, etc. All that's controlled, you don't get the steam coming so out. So it's a bit of a nicer process for the environment, for the operator. Absolutely. It keeps the whole environment uh, friendly. Talking yeah. about operator ergonomics now, I see you've got in front of the, the machine, you've got a loading system here which is based on rails. Um, could you explain how this works and then how maybe you'd automate this if you didn't want to have to do it manually? Yes, of course. It depends on the space requirement and handling and the, and the quality you need to achieve within your business. You could have a standard roller system here just with basic rollers going backwards and forwards, but this is a twin slide system. So here on the, on the left hand side we would put our dirty basket components, slide it across and push that into our, our work chamber where the parts will be cleaned. When the process is finished and the parts are cleaned, you can then bring the cleaner slide across and remove the components onto the clean section. So trying to reduce contamination crossover. It's all about the isolation. Yeah. Because I guess when you clean something, it's never going to be 100% clean. It will always affect the clean water you're using and the water will always affect the part you're using. So Absolutely. it's all about just trying to isolate them as much as possible. The more you can reduce the contamination going into the machine, actually in the machine, and then when it comes out of the machine, the more consistency you will have, the more quality you will have, and the better product you will have. What about the maintenance with these machines? Now, do you have, what about filters, changing the filters, changing the water? What problems will people, will customers have with other systems they might not have with this? Well, maintenance uh, will depend upon the volume of contamination going and the type of contamination going into the machine. Uh, you can get uh, systems where maybe you're in remanufacturing and putting high volume of contamination in uh, particles and oils and carbons and things like this, where maybe you need to alter the, uh, change the uh, filters daily or bi-daily. But typically weekly or monthly, or even with some customers with clean parts, which they're cleaning, uh, uh, sounds strange, but <laughs> you do need to clean clean parts because you may need to just de-oil them and ensure the particle reduction. Then maybe you, you only change a filter once a year. It's 
totally down to what you're putting into the machine. So how do they measure the cleanliness of these parts? I mean, you mentioned the VGA19 standard. How do people measure, how do people know how clean a part is? Yes, it depends what industry you're in. So VDA19 for the automotive industry, aerospace have their uh, uh, standards, medical have their standards. So there's different measures. But typically, uh, most customers want to look to see if there's particles and they define a particle size. So anything from an inch down to a centimetre, down an to... An inch particle, <laughs> a pretty big particle. <laughs> down to, for, for, for some, down to microns. And we're, we're talking you know, uh, 100 microns, 75 microns, 50 microns, and so on, depending on which industry. Others want to look at the, uh, the surface tension, how, how much it degreased the surface. If I want to paint the surface after, or weld, or something like this, which affects the surface, then it's important to be degreased to a high level. If you have any contamination, grease there, and you weld, then you maybe get splash, uh, splashing on the weld or, or poor adhesion with your paint. So um, degrease standards and particles are the, the two main. And you can use all different types of tools for that uh, with UV lamps or particle analysis or inks, etc. cetera.